Hello, this is Amulya Gupta. I got All India Rank 8 in AIMS. Uh, in this video, I am going to uh, tell you how to solve a question uh, when you encounter it in uh, your tests. So, I assume that you first start with biology because biology is the easiest part. So, uh, naturally students have tendency to start with biology. Then you come to chemistry. Chemistry is also relatively easy to solve. What is the most difficult part and in uh, which the students find difficult is physics. So when we enter physics, we have to uh, start solving questions in a different way as compared to biology and chemistry where the questions are generally stereotype questions which, uh, which we found, uh, find in books and all. But in physics, the question can differ as well. So uh, when you start with physics, first of all, uh, just uh, read the question. And if you find the question is a stereotype question that you have already solved and it's uh, found in a number of books, so you can directly solve it and have the answer. After you get the answer, just before you mark the answer in your OMR sheet, just try to put the answer back into the question so that you can see that the, the value or the formula that you are getting is making some sense. If it's not making sense or uh, if the situation is going imperceptible, then you should again work on the question. Perhaps you have made a mistake. So this is how you will uh, reduce your error rate. Right. So, uh, uh, what most students do is like if they find a stereotype question, they just solve it and mark the answer. And in this thing, they commit a lot of silly mistakes and uh, their need scores go down. Uh, but if you just do the small step, it takes hardly 10 to 15 seconds. You just have to put the value back in the, the question and just perceive the situation. Just imagine the situation and you'll find that uh, either it's fixing in the situation or it's not. If it's not fixing in the question, you can save uh, your minus one mark that you would be getting there and get a plus four instead. So after doing this, you have to just uh, start solving the question. If you are not able to perceive the question or understand the question in the first go, just leave it. Leave it for the end. Just circle it and leave it for the end. After you have uh, just gone through all the questions and solved some of them, marked some of them, whatever, you will be having some time in the end. Now you have to start with the circled questions. So uh, when you get to the first circled question, for example, then you would be thinking like, uh, okay, so uh, I have to understand it. I have to understand the situation. So first imagine the scenario, whatever you are getting, and then think of the uh, variables on which the answer might be depending. And you can also do dimensional analysis. This is a loophole in uh, MCQ questions. Sometimes the examiner forgets to see the dimensions. Sometimes all the four options are having different dimensions and you know the dimension of the answer. So if you uh, don't know the strategy to solve the question, you can just uh, see the dimensions of the answers and the right dimension uh, one will be the correct answer. You can mark it and you can get a plus four. Uh, but if this fails, then you have to uh, think a, uh, a bit more. Sometimes you have standard formula. For example, in some, uh, like the Planck's constant, H. In some formula, you have like Planck constant is going to be on in the numerator and other formula you have it in denominator. So sometimes you can link it that way and find, uh, and you know, you can just cancel options which are definitely incorrect. So this is a way you can narrow down to some questions and make uh, what you say an educated guess, which sometimes prove to be right. And this is very helpful, really helpful. Uh, I, but, but you have to believe that this is an emergency measure. You don't have to use it in, uh, you know, uh, solving commonplace questions. You can commit errors. You have to just solve these, uh, use these techniques only when uh, you are not able to think of anything else. The third technique that you apply while solving questions is the calculator technique. Uh, some, you, you can use it in AIMS exam and sometimes in NEET examination also. Uh, of course, you don't have calculator in NEET examination, but you can uh, you use your mathematical skills to solve the questions. Sometimes what happens is that the examiner is too lenient with the uh, options. Sometimes the options are very far away. So you can try to just use the values that are given in the question try to arrange them, try to make a formula of your own. Even if you don't know the way, you can like put them in numerator and then denominator and divide it and then you can make a number of combinations and then solve it. Sometimes it happens like you have uh, used the calculation part and you get some answer 
and if the answer is uh, one of uh, uh, is matching with the options then you can definitely tick it and you can move forward so these are some ways in which you can improve your scores make educated guests instead of you know just leaving the question you can just play out of crease and you can attempt those questions so now i'll tell you how to use these techniques how to use your analytical uh, skills in solving a question uh, so this is a question from the aims prep guide page number 93 so the sixth question so you have a non uniform bar of weight w and all so suppose you are not able to get how to solve it how to make a formula so i'll just tell you some ways of uh, getting to the answer so let's see the options so all the options are having l in the numerator so it's definitely going to be in the numerator only because uh, as you increase the l the center of gravity is going to shift towards uh, away from the uh, left end and so l has to be in numerator only and it's in uh, this way in all the four options now you have to see uh, what would be the effect if you increase th theta 1 theta 1 is an angle so if you increase theta 1 you can feel that uh, the upward force is decreasing this means if you have to balance the torque around the center of gravity you have to increase the length from the center of gravity so this means if theta 1 will increase the distance from uh, of the left end from the center of gravity is going to increase so uh, this means that uh, the answer must have theta 1 in the numerator tan theta 1 should be in numerator or uh, it should be directly proportional so we have only one option like this but see if you increase theta 1 you would be decreasing theta 2 so this means it should be inversely proportional to theta 2 but uh, then two options come in your mind the b and d options but then uh, we have to again analyze this suppose you make theta 2 0 in such a condition the center of gravity will become infinite which is just an imperceivable situation so this means the answer is b and we have got the answer without actually solving the question and we have uh, uh, got to the answer so this is how you will have to apply your analytical skills in solving questions thank you for watching this video so, uh, we will be making such videos in future also to guide you to ease your stress and to make your preparation more efficient. Press the bell icon present below and you would never miss an update. Thank you.